welcome this will be a video lecture series on diffraction of light uh, in this video we will cover the introductory part and in the subsequent video we will go for the more topic on diffraction of light so let's start we will start with just a simple observation let's call it observation a suppose we have a light source and if we place a slit in front of it slit is nothing but a small opening and these are the opaque space okay now let's place a screen in front of it so that we can look for the image now it's easy guess for everyone lights moves in a straight line like this and then we will have an image here okay and all these places are the dark space okay now we will repeat same kind of experiments with the little smaller opening of the slit. Okay, so let's call it observation B, a light source slit. Now, in this case, the width of slit, okay, the width of opening is small compared to the earlier case, a similar screen. Again, light moves in a straight line, and we will have an image here. These are the dark space. Now again repeat this experiment, and this time we will have slit width such that it is of the order of wavelength of light. So let's call this observation observation C a light source slit. Here the width width of this slit is of the order of wavelength of light, okay. I screen now in this scenario we will see that light is no longer moving in a straight line rather is deviated from its path okay so light bends around this corner okay and what we will have a image at this place now this image is little different compared to the earlier image it have a some kind of band a dark and uh, bright bands and these are the dark space here the boundary of image is not also clear like sharp not clear the boundary of image is not sharp and this kind of observation possible only when the width of the slit is of the order of wavelength of light okay now uh, this type of observation is not uh, very usually observed in case of light because it required the diffracting element of the order of wavelength of light and the wavelength of light is very small okay but diffraction phenomena is very prominent in the case of sound okay because the wavelength of sound is much higher so the fact that you can hear sounds around the corner and around the barrier involve both diffraction and reflection of sound diffraction helps the sound to bend around the obstacle that's why if you are standing in the corner of any room still you can hear sound from the outside and sounds bends around the corner of your door okay so both diff diffraction and reflection phenomena present in the case of sound okay so this type of phenomena that is the bending of light is called the diffraction so what is diffraction diffraction is nothing but bending of light when it passes through a narrow or sharp okay this type of phenomena is quite uh, not strange uh, because we are familiar with it but during 17th century this was a very strange phenomena that time it was believed that lights moves in a straight line and that's what we call the rectilinear property of light that is light moves in a straight line okay 
so explanation of this phenomena is very challenging those time until a scientist Fresnel came with an idea now his idea is based upon the already existing principle that time so what he did he mixed two existing principle at that time hydrogen principle of wave nature and principle of superposition of light so he mixed these two idea to explain the diffraction phenomena so before going to what is diffraction from this point of view let's discuss about these two principles so hydrogen principle of wave Okay, it says that in a homogeneous and isotropic medium, every point of a primary waveform serves as the source. Okay, so the thing is, what is waveform? Okay, let's start. Suppose we have a light source here, so it will diverse wave in all possible directions. Now, as wave moves, so in different point in the space it have different okay, different phase okay so if you connect the same phase point okay or equidistance point from the source then the surface or the line originate is called the waveform okay so suppose this point a b c d e all are equispaced from the point O or are in the same phase. So, if you connect all these points, then this boundary is nothing but wave front. Okay. Now, so let's call it a primary wave front. Okay. Then each point in this primary wave front will serve as a source and it will produce. A secondary wavelets and these secondary wavelets suppose a is the source then this is the again diverging wavelets from point a these are the diverging wavelets from the point b so these are these act as a source of secondary wavelet and this secondary wavelet move with the same speed and frequency okay now principle of superposition of light it is there that when two or more light moves, okay, when two or more light wave overlap in space at any instant, then resultant disturbance is equal to the algebraic sum of individual disturbance, okay. And how we can think about it? Suppose we have, a, for example, this is one wave, this is another wave. Suppose these two wave meet at some point, let's here. Okay. Then what we will see, actually we will see the resultant disturbance, in which is this point. And this is nothing but the algebraic sum of these two. Okay. So actually we will see this resultant wave. So there he said the diffraction is nothing but the mutual interference okay of secondary wavelet derived from a particular wave front suppose uh, we place a light source in front of a diffracting element then secondary wavelet arises from the second uh, diffracting element will move toward the screen and all will overlap each other and what we will see the resultant disturbance on the screen which is nothing but the diffraction pattern now there are two types of diffractions and these are depending upon the position of source and the point of observation from the diffracting element okay. so these two factors decide uh, how many kinds of diffraction and there are two types of diffraction first is Fresnel's when the source and the point of observation are both at the finite distance from diffracting element we will have Fresnel diffraction in this case 
spherical wave front will be involved with the phenomena because if you put a point source then it produce a wave which is diverging in all the directions so it will have a spherical shape okay as it is on the finite distance uh, we can always see the spherical or in other words, we have a diverging wave involved in this type of phenomena. Second is a proper diffraction when the source and observation both at the infinite distance from the diffracting element. Now suppose we have a place source at very far away, and if it producing a spherical wave front, then when spherical Away from diverge and it reach a very far away from the source, then a, a small part of a spherical wave front look like a plane wave. Okay, so in this case, plane wave front will be involved in the phenomena. So these are so far the basic. So what are the take home masses from this lecture? is uh, diffraction will be observed only when the obstacle size is comparable with the wavelength of light diffraction pattern formed by superposition of all secondary wavelets and there are two types of diffraction Fresnel and Fresnel. see you in next part thank you